So I have figured out the answer to the quintessential question, what is the purpose of my life? For me, I'm here to smash the patriarchy, eliminate misogyny, and dismantle racism. And then I realized I have three loads of laundry to do, I haven't purchased groceries in a while, and I think there's some homework that needs to get done. But honestly, I do a lot of different talks around this topic, and one of the topics I really enjoy talking about is about Muslim women and the contributions we have to society. Not too long ago, I was at my computer, and I needed to get images of Muslim women to put into my PowerPoint presentation. And so I went to my trusty little Google search engine, and I typed in Muslim women, and here's one of the images that popped up. Now, I don't have a problem with this image per se. My problem is really around the context around the stories around these images. You see, I have a lot of family and friends who dress this way, and they've made a profound decision on how they want to express their faith. My problem is that it's a very sort of monolithic um, image of who Muslim women are. It doesn't represent people who look like me and dress like me, or women that actually don't observe the hijab or the headscarf. So I found this really problematic. And the further I looked into it, I realized that the problem is that there is such a negative stereotype around these images. A lot of people feel that when they see this type of image, a lot of negative stereotypes come forth. We're always seen in this um, context of being stigmatized, marginalized, and oppressed. It's always dehumanizing to see that we're the subject of hate crimes. And instead of being curious about who we are, people feel really threatened by who we are. And so we need to change this perception. And what I came to realize was, somebody else is always telling our story. And in order for us to change this negative stereotype, we need to start telling our stories ourselves, because these stories cannot be about us without us. So some friends of mine and I, we got together, and we launched a storytelling project called Muslim Sheroes of Minnesota. The storytelling project showcases women right here in Minnesota who are doing amazing work, change makers and trailblazers. One of the best things about these stories is that finally, Google has some images that I can use that reflect my community. So I'm gonna share with you three stories that we've been telling. Meet my friend, Amina. Now, Amina saw these stories, and she was really inspired about what she was learning, and she saw herself within these stories. And so Amina decided she wanted to get more involved. And so when the call came, she decided to become an election judge. Now, can you imagine Amina sitting at your polling place, looking the way she does with her pretty floral hijab, and when there's so much conversation right now about who is American, she's the one who's registering you or checking you in and asking those questions. And then Amina didn't just stop there. She started to learn about boards and commissions in her city. And she decided, hey, I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna serve in my community. So she went out to be a commissioner for the Public Safety Commission. Again, can you imagine Amina at a table full of people who don't look like her and most likely a dominant culture but she is there, again, in her beautiful headscarf, representing and giving voice to a marginalized community. When you talk to Amina and you ask her about how it's going, she will tell you how she's lived in her city all her life, but finally she feels like it's really hers and that it feels like home. She has moved from feeling welcomed to being included and feeling like she belongs. Now meet these wonderful, wonderful students. 
These are the girls from Hopkins Middle School and High School. They attended a leadership conference that we hosted earlier this year. Here they're taking a picture with Ibtihaj Muhammad. Ibtihaj is the very first Muslim hijab wearing woman to serve on United States Olympic team. And she's a bronze medalist. So really an amazing Shiro. Now usually our conference um, targets and invites women who are already out in the workforce and adults. But these girls, their teacher, Angela Wilcox, reached out to me and asked, would it be appropriate to bring this group of students? And I said, absolutely, the more the merrier. The girls had a wonderful time. They were able to see women that looked like them on platforms, change makers, people that they could really aspire to be. And after the conference, Angela emailed me back saying the girls were so inspired that they feel that they can be and live lives that they never had dreamt of. Now what the girls are doing are really true young leaders in our community. They went back and did a presentation to their school board members of, of our conference and also started a storytelling project about their histories. They are talking to their elders in their community and telling the story of what Somalia used to be before the Civil War. And here's a way for these girls to really lead in their community and tell their story themselves, all while, all while honoring the elders of their community. Now I want you to meet my friend, Sally. This is the kind of scenery you guys are going to see. You won't have to paddle that hard. The river will do most of the work. So Bloom is an organization that I started two years ago. We try to get Muslim sisters back out into the nature because, unfortunately, a lot of us don't get outside enough. And what better place than like a setting like this to connect with God? You know, I was born, I was raised here in the States, and so I was raised camping and canoeing and being outside, whereas a lot of other people, they didn't really have that connection with nature growing up. I was constantly, like, taking out my friends, like, let's go canoeing, let's go do this, let's go do that. <laughs> a lot of girls were, like, surprised, like, oh, how do you go horseback riding with your dress on? So we were trying to figure out a way to do it, and then when we figured it out for just, like, three people, it was like, this is a waste, we should do it for, like, 30 people. <laughs> Hence, Bloom was born. We started taking out bigger groups of girls, like, today we're going to go canoeing. Who wants to go first? I'm going to show you guys how to launch here. I never really seek out a leadership role, but sometimes it seeks me out. And so for me, like, I'm good at organizing. I'm really outgoing. I love the outdoors. And I have this huge network of people. It's kind of like it just makes sense okay, that I do okay. this. You'll be a pro by the end. Oh, Sally's got you. You're in good shape. Okay, well, thank you so much, yeah. Eric. Remember to call me when you see the bridge, okay? I truly, truly believe that God has created each one of us with very, very, very unique characteristics and strengths. And we need to figure out what makes us us and then take those things and figure out how we can best serve our community as a whole and, you know, in that serve our God. The, f the first time I watched that video, I was convinced that the closed captioning would not keep up with Sally. <laughs> So Sally um, is the executive director of Bloom Adventures, which is an organization that likes to take women out and be one with nature. When her video first debuted, she started to get inundated with phone calls and emails and text messages about how can she come to other communities and start chapters around Bloom. And what's amazing about Sally is that she can't say no, but she knows she can't be all over the nation starting these chapters. So she creates a document, sort of guidelines and a how-to on starting a Bloom Adventure chapter in, her, in other communities. So Sally doesn't say no, but instead she empowers other women to go out and do it for themselves. And when you watch her, I hope that you started to see the images of the St. Croix, of canoeing, of being outdoors, and you started to forget that you can't see Sally's face, that you hear her voice and you realize that it sounds just like yours. I hope that instead of having those really threatening stereotypes pop up into your conscious, instead you feel curiosity and you feel like a connection with her. You see, we're all 
human, and we all love to know about one another. We crave that human connection. We empathize. We want to be able to lift each other up and continue telling these stories. Now, I've been telling these stories for a while, and I invite you to share yours as well as tell these stories going forward. Now, when I Google Muslim women, if I scroll down just a little bit, I can find myself. Thank you.